Hello, and thank you for joining me for Public Health in Action, where we discuss various public health issues facing Stanley County. My name is Dennis Joyner, and I'm the Stanley County Health Director with the Stanley County Department of Public Health. And today, joining me, we're pleased to welcome Toby Thorpe, who's the Director of the Albemarle Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, when looking at a, what makes a community livable, parks and recreation facilities usually are at the top of the list. Every uh, four, three years, we do a community health assessment, and one of the things that often is at the top of the list, uh, certainly it was in 2013, was the issue of obesity and uh, overweight concerns. That was the number one health issue cited in that particular community health assessment. So inactivity and lack of physical activity was also listed as one of the top five health issues. This was true particularly for residents in the city of Albemarle as well. For those who are 75 years or older, lack of recreational programming was listed as number three among the community issues. And for those aged 35 to 54, lack of recreational facilities was number four. So as you can see, Parks and Recreation has a lot to offer in terms of addressing many of these issues facing Stanley County particularly some of those issues around uh, physical activity and overweight and obesity, which uh, lead to so many other problems. So uh, again, I want to welcome you for uh, joining us. And it's kind of interesting that uh, Avalon Parks and Recreation goes back a good ways. Can you give me just a little bit of the history on? on sure, that? Dennis. The, uh, and I, we appreciate the opportunity to come out and, uh, and, and tell about ourselves. Albemarle Parks and Recreation was formed in 1963, April of 1963, by action of the City Council. Prior to that, the City had a, a, a part-time Parks and Recreation program, which basically was just a summer program, uh, and, and mainly consisted of, of operating a swimming pool, and that was about it. Uh, 1963, uh, the city hired Bob Amos as its first Parks and Recreation Director. Uh, the uh, Parks Department offices were, were located uh, downtown. The, uh, the primary programs in, in, uh, in that time were uh, a teen club, which uh, operated out of the old Albemarle Hotel, a uh, uh, tennis uh swimming, uh, sports leagues that mainly were centered out of Rock Creek Park, and some arts and crafts programming, as well as a summer playground program. Mr. Amos left and I believe went to High Point Parks and Recreation after, or in 1967, upon which time Chuck Moorhead, who was in a different capacity with the city at that time, he was hired on as the new Parks and Recreation Director. One of the first things he did was relocate the uh, Parks and Recreation offices from downtown into the city's main park, Rock Creek Park. Mr. Moorhead uh, also uh, expanded the programming. He had an uh, extensive military background. And one of the things that he, he saw a need th uh, for through his involvement with Boy Scouts and uh, with, with uh, uh, military type programming was uh, an opportunity to uh, transfer that over into parks and recreation programming. Thus, mm -hmm. the challenge program was mm -hmm. begun. It was ahead of its time. Uh, it was probably the first department in the state to offer outdoor adventure, risk adventure type mm -hmm. programming. Uh, since then, many other departments have picked it up, but I believe Albemarle was probably the first. Uh, Mr. Moorhead uh, continued in that position to 1985 when he retired. Lindsey Dunavant took over as director at that time. During Mr. Moorhead's time as director, the city expanded beyond Rock Creek and South Albemarle Parks and what is now known as Don Montgomery Park, uh, which is primarily an athletic park, uh, at that time, it was called Carolina Avenue Park when it was developed. Uh, that, that was built during Mr. Moorhead's time, uh, as, as was 
what was called at the time it opened Northwoods Park, which is now Chuck Moorhead Park on the north end of town. It was renamed after his death in 1988 in honor of all that he did. Lindsay Dunavant took over as the Parks and Recreation Director in 1985 upon Mr. Moorhead's retirement and continued through 2006. Lindsay was instrumental in expanding programming uh, to a point that, uh, that there, the, the program became more of a year-round program rather than just summer still our busiest time but uh, we have plenty for people to do all the way around the calendar and Lindsay's primarily responsible for developing those type programs. He also did a, 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 a tremendous amount in, uh, in obtaining grant funds. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the soccer fields at Stanley Community College are a result of grant funds that, that Lindsay was able to get. City Lake Park was developed under his uh, under his time as director, and it's kind of it's kind of the showcase yeah. park yeah. that we've got now. Uh, a number of improvements to existing facilities were made, and uh, and Lindsay uh, Lindsay uh, definitely put his stamp on parks and recreation. So, following those those guys, I've had some That's big shoes to fill, and don't know to fill them all <laughs> that well, but doing the best I can. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's interesting that you mentioned the challenge. Uh, efforts that was going on. I guess some of the wall and some of those things that are down at Rock Creek was sort of a, grew out of that or was the result of some of that? Uh, the climbing at, wall. Absolutely. Those, the, uh, the repelling tower yeah. was built by Mr. Moorhead. Uh, it's, it's modeled after similar uh, facilities used in outward bound training uh, and, and ropes course training. The obstacle course along the creek at Rock Creek was also part of the all of that was built to basically house the challenge program. Yeah, interesting. I didn't realize it had that much history mm -hmm. going back that far. Well, obviously we've got a rich history uh, and rich facilities in many ways, rich in the sense of um, some variety, uh, more so maybe than, than anything else in, in that respect. But what's the big value of having a park in communities? What, what does it add to our community in, in your opinion? Beyond just the obvious benefits that individuals get from visiting a park or participating in a program at a park or a program offered by a Parks and Recreation Department, the community as a whole benefits from it. Let's say that, that a, a person who a person starts going to a park and begins walking or begins physical activity. One of the things we talked about that is a problem in the county is lack of that. If we can encourage people to, uh, to be active uh, using the parks, using the programs, that's a physical benefit to the individual, but that also leads to uh, uh, psychological and, and uh, emotional benefits. It relieves stress. And uh, beyond that, uh, people, are people are able to meet and, uh, and enjoy their time together. You've got happy, healthy people. That leads to economic benefits because it decreases health care costs. Right. And uh, there, there are many trails of benefits that you can uh, identify through different parks and recreation activities and programs that, uh, that, that uh, benefit more than just the person involved. They benefit the whole community. Right. And I think it's oftentimes taken for granted, too, because while we're talking about predominantly today, Albemarle Parks and Recreation. Uh, coming from a county's perspective, the county is pretty blessed and a lot of the municipalities have parks and Oakboro and Locust and I mean I'm going to go through them, Norwood, sure. all of them have their own little stamps of things that they showcase, either walking trails or lakes or those kind of things. And so uh, what you just said about the ones here in Albemarle we're, we're fortunate in Stanley County to have parks, at least facilities, in a lot of venues in, uh, in our community that a lot of counties can't say. Absolutely. The, uh, and I think our towns have done a good job of identifying yeah. those things that they can, that they can capitalize on. What, what's the best place in town to put this park? 
What are we about? What is our history about? I think all of our towns have done a good job with that. Yeah, yeah. And the North Carolina Parks and Recreation Trust Fund has made most of those local parks available. Mm -hmm. they, they have been able to uh, to obtain those funds, a lot of the reason being because of something that Lindsay started back in the early 2000s, and that was putting together a county-wide master plan. Even though Stanley County does not have a Parks and Recreation Department for the county, uh, by going together and having all the communities contribute and work together, a Parks and Recreation Master Plan for facilities and programs was put together in 2000, then renewed in 2011. And by having that master plan, it gets us points when we apply or when any, any community in the county applies for uh, state grant funds. Wow. So it has a big leveraging effect Very for much resources. So. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great to know. Um, some of the specific rec recreational facilities in Albemarle, there, you mentioned earlier, I think, that uh, you went through several of them. But in my understanding, there's five community parks in Albemarle. What? What are some of the programs that are offered in those particular parks? Okay, Rock Creek is our, uh, that was the first park in town and the oldest park. And uh, still a, a very big hub of, of, of programs, primarily during the summer. We have a swimming pool there, a lighted baseball, softball field, all of which are, are heavily used. Our challenge program is housed there. We have a one mile uh, walking trail that, uh, if, if you go back and look, it was a rails-to-trails project before that term <laughs> was ever known because an old railroad grade, grade was converted into a walking trail there. Uh, uh, there's, there's a picnic area. Uh, uh, we have bocce courts that are primarily used for our senior games program, but anybody's welcome to come in and take part. And our future plans are to try to revive an archery program using the old gun range, which won't ever be a gun range right. again, but it would be fairly uh, simple to convert to an archery range. So that's, that's primarily what we've got going on at Rock Creek. Uh, Roosevelt Ingram Park is located on the 2427 bypass uh, directly across the road from the E.E. E. Waddell Community Center. That part was built in the 1950s during the days of segregation. And it was also built to serve the South Albemarle community prior to the 2427 bypass ever coming through. When that bypass was built, it basically cut the park off from the community it was built to serve. Hmm. When the bypass was widened to five lanes back in the late 90s, it basically destroyed any hopes of it of it serving that community. So right now we mainly use it for its lighted athletic field. It has a playground, uh, also has a picnic area, but it's primarily an athletic park. It has been for sale since the mid '90s, uh, but not long after it went for sale, the economy kind of tanked. So we we haven't been able to move that property yet. The intent is for when that when that land does sell, hopefully to a commercial developer, someone that can that can uh, really make use. It's great frontage area there. Right, right. We would like to take the uh, the revenue from that sale and use it to move some of those same amenities over to the Waddell Center and that area and get it back right. in the community it was built to serve. Gotcha. Uh, Don Montgomery Park was built in the mid 1970s under Mr. Moorhead. When it was first built, it had a lighted baseball field, playground, lighted basketball court, six lighted tennis courts, and uh, a couple of picnic shelters. Flooding in the 1980s destroyed the tennis courts, and they were eventually taken out. Uh, however, the rest of the facility remains and is used uh, extensively. Uh, Montgomery Park is the home field for Albemarle High mm -hmm. School's baseball field. It's the home field for the Stanley County American Legion baseball team. And when they're not using it, we have pro we generally have baseball programs going on there. Optimist Park, which at one time was not owned by the city, was uh, became city property in the uh, early 2000s, and uh, we operate all of our youth 12 and under baseball out of it and it's directly adjacent to Montgomery Park. We, 
kind of refer to them as one and the right. same. Right. Share ways. the parking area there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Moorhead Park was built in, I believe it opened in 1980, and it, uh, it features a, a, a pool, six lighted tennis courts, uh, uh, one large multi-purpose field, two soccer fields. It has a picnic shelter, uh, has a championship level disc golf course, and the trail through that disc golf course doubles as a cross country course during the uh, fall season, and several local high schools use it. The, we currently have a uh, North Carolina Parks and Recreation Trust Fund uh, grant application in to do some improvements to the tennis courts, the pool, possibly build a couple picnic shelters, and even add a dog park up there. But uh, we're waiting to see. Uh, we, we, as of time of this taping, we don't have, uh, don't have any word back from the uh, North Carolina Parks and Recreation Authority on that. City Lake is our newest park. It opened in 2002. It was, uh, and a second phase was, uh, was completed in 2004. One of, the, one of the favorite trivia questions that we've got about City Lake Park is what current country music star sung at the dedication of the park, and that was Kelly Pickler. She was Miss Stanley County at the time and sung at the initial opening ceremony of the park in 2002. Uh, the park includes, of course, a lakefront with, uh, with fishing, an opportunity for boating. Uh, a lot of people put kayaks and canoes in there. We don't allow uh, gas motors on the lake because it's small and it's shallow in places, but we do allow trolling motors. Uh, it's heavily fished. Uh, we have a nine-hole disc golf course there, three picnic shelters, an amphitheater that we use for performances, and uh, it's actually available for rental. It's been used for a number of weddings. Uh, some concerts and mm -hmm. so forth. Uh, we have a number of multiple purpose trails there for mountain biking and for hiking. The, uh, uh, the park is uh, about 140 acres, roughly half of its water, but uh, it's, it's heavily used. This time of year on the weekends, it, it, it stays full. Well, one of the things about uh, City Lake that I find amazing, it, for a city, even large cities, uh, it's very, uh, it's so rural in the sense that you can get off on those trails and you, you just almost think you're, uh, you're, you're nowhere near a town. You or, wouldn't or, think you know, you'd be in no, city limits, no, no, no doubt. No. Yeah, very, very nice. Um, there are several neighborhood playgrounds or parks that are throughout Albemarle as well, and those are things I think that y'all also manage uh, to, to, some, to some extent. How do they sort of differ in terms of their use? We don't do a lot of uh, organized programming at some of the neighborhood playgrounds. Namely, those are West Albemarle, which is right behind the old West Albemarle Elementary School uh, in, in the, on the west side of town. East Cannon uh, Playground, yeah. which is uh, located uh, off, off Moss Springs Road and East Cannon Avenue. And then we also have a playground, uh, a community playground at the E.E. E. Waddell Community Center. Those are basically, like I say, just free play areas with playground equipment. And uh, East Cannon and West Albemarle have been identified as areas that we want to try to improve in the future through the Playful City USA program. In terms of actual building facilities, I guess the the E.E. E. Waddell Center and then the new, well new to y'all, the Niven Center right. are the sort of the two hubs because I know your offices used to be at Rock Creek Indeed. and uh, now that facility is, uh, is gone but uh, what, what takes place at these particular uh, physical facilities okay. like that? At the Waddell Center uh, it, is, it is pretty much a hub of activity for the South Albemarle community. There are a number of, uh, of area civic groups that use that as a meeting place. The gymnasium, when we're not programming uh, basketball leagues or volleyball leagues in there, it's always uh, a lot of people in there using that facility to, to play basketball or other games. The, uh, the 
main building of the Waddell Center, which was renovated in, in 2009-2010, has rooms that are available for rental, a large banquet type facility that is, uh, it's busy every weekend with family reunions, birthday parties, uh, certain, uh, certain uh, meetings that are held mm -hmm. there. In addition, there's a number of community events that are held there on a regular basis. The banquet halls used for the Martin Luther King Community Prayer Breakfast uh, on, on, uh, in January each year. It's used for the, a senior Valentine's Ball that our department uh, works through the Waddell Center. Uh, we have Mother's and Father's Day events there and uh, also a big back to school bash each August that, uh, that are programmed at the Waddell Center. Uh, at the Niven Center, we're, uh, uh, we're, we're just getting used to having room to walk around and not trip over <laughs> uh -huh. each other uh, after, after all those years in the little house at Rock Creek. Uh, and so we've got nice office space which we share uh, a couple of program areas, one with the uh, senior meals, senior nutrition mm -hmm. site through the uh, Stanley County Senior Services, and Homes of Hope occupies offices on the east end of the center. Uh, we have a classroom that doubles as a, uh, as a meeting place and also as a, as a dance studio for some shag classes and line dance classes that we contract out. We have uh, martial arts classes and competitive cheer that meet in our large gym type area there. And uh, in addition to that, that's a, basically our administrative hub now. Anybody who wants to sign up for any of our activities, get more information about what we've got going on, or visit with a staff member, uh, generally is going to come to the Niven Center. In addition to that, we've got a, a really nice maintenance area that we didn't have before that uh, using the old motor pool facilities from the uh, Army Reserve that was located there prior to us. Yeah, I was going to say, I think uh, that's, that's one of the overlooked aspects there is that you've got, uh, it seems like at Rock Creek there was a whole lot of your equipment and stuff that was there, but it was sort of spread out and all around, and now you can kind of get everything a little more consolidated, I guess. We can, and it's, it's more secure, right. too. Yeah. In terms of... Uh, you mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, the community college soccer fields. Mm -hmm. um, if you are going down 24-27 at any time on a Saturday morning during soccer season, people know uh, this, this little area gets congested real quickly. Uh, but that has been very, very popular. Could you talk a little bit about that program? Absolutely. And use of those uh, we, we operate a fall soccer league that uh, utilizes the fields at Stanley Community College. Those fields were built and opened in 2000. We've got three full-size soccer fields and they can be broken down into as many as nine mini soccer fields. And that's, that's mainly what we have. The younger ages play on small fields and uh, it's not unusual for us to have as many as seven games going on here at one time. Uh, six on the, on the small fields and maybe one on a full-size field on Saturdays. And, that generally is, is our, our program combined with other community programs in the county and this is basically the meeting place for all of them to come together and play. In addition to those uh, regular leagues, we have travel teams that use the facility on a rental basis and uh, Pfeiffer and Greystone have used it for both soccer and Pfeiffer has used it for lacrosse. Uh, in, in the past. The, uh, the facility also uh, houses camps and, and summer programs that we do and we've even held a, uh, a special event uh, uh, known as our, our kite, ve kite festival that has been done here in the spring where we teach youngsters how to build kites and take them up on the soccer fields to fly. Them. So it, it's a great multiple use area. Yeah. And it, it came about through a partnership. This was something that was worked out between Stanley Community College, uh, the North Carolina National Guard, uh, and they, they were able to come in and do a lot of the grading uh, uh, to help out with it. Albemarle Parks and Recreation, kind of the lead agency with it, and it was funded primarily through the North Carolina Parks and Recreation Trust Fund. Well, I know it's a 
it's a, it's a nice, nice facility that gets a whole lot of, lot of use. We're proud of it. Yeah. Um, the Roger Snyder Greenway is one of the newer things that we hear talked about mm -hmm. with uh, Albemarle Parks and Recreation. If you could talk a little bit about that, because I think that's a real exciting sure. opportunity for us. Greenways are, are basically linear parks. They, uh, they generally feature a trail and a green space that provides pedestrian access from one area of a, of a uh, urbanized area to another. Mayor Snyder, prior, uh, during his time as mayor, this was a vision of his to, to have a network of trails in Albemarle that connected the parks to downtown, the downtown to schools, uh, the, uh, uh, that connected neighborhoods and shopping centers, and that, that was something that he wanted to see. He passed away in 2005, but uh, because he was the driving force be get, behind getting this rolling in Albemarle, uh, his name was play, has been placed on the Greenway system. And currently, uh, we're, we're trying to develop space and develop trails as right-of-way and as land becomes available within the city. Currently, we've, we've got a number of trails, but they, they're not interconnected yet. We're working toward that, and it's going to require cooperation uh, to some extent from Norfolk Southern Railroad, which owns a lot of the old rail line through town, even though it will probably never become a, a railroad again, uh, we, we would like to be able to obtain that land. We've talked to them and we've got to come closer together on an right. agreement to get that. There are also opportunities for developing trails along existing easements like sewer lines mm -hmm. or uh, power line easements and so forth. So uh, we, we look to connect most of that. It's, it's, a, uh, it, it's a slow process, a little slower than I'd like to see it, but uh, we have to be patient in order to make those things happen. And that's what we've been working on. Currently we have about three miles of trail in Albemarle, a, a mile at Rock Creek, and between a mile and a half and two miles in the Salisbury Avenue, Don Montgomery Park area. that. Uh, kind of a loop right, right now. And uh, my understanding is eventually it would be the goal to connect to Rock Creek possibly at some point and yes, even it would. up to the north a little bit further. It would and the, the connections to the north and beyond town are part of the Carolina right. Thread Trail. That is, the Carolina Thread Trail is a regional greenway initiative for 15 counties surrounding uh, Charlotte, surrounding Mecklenburg County. And the vision for that is to eventually have connections by way of, uh, by way of uh, walking trails, biking trails, even paddle trails uh, along the Rocky huh. River and, and some other tributaries are, are, um, are being proposed to, uh, to link those counties uh, together and eventually connect them. It's a big time project and uh, it, it's also a very long term project. But the Snyder Greenway is basically our part right. of the Carolina Thread Trail. All right. Well, it's a, it, is a, it is a nice one, and that's one of those things that uh, each time we see a little more pavement put down, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it is kind of exciting for uh, the folks here in Avalon. We're, we're hopefully going to get more. Yeah. Um, the population is trending uh, older. Uh, what recreational programs do y'all provide for the seniors in our community. Okay. Our biggest uh, activity that Parks and Recreation is involved with for seniors is URA Senior Games. We're mm -hmm. the lead agency of, of three that, uh, that provide uh, uh, Senior Games, which is a, an initiative for seniors to be active uh, year-round and, and uh, to be, to be uh, involved physically, spiritually, emotionally, in, in all around them. And URA Senior Games is part of the larger North Carolina Senior Games program, which is also part of National Senior Olympics. 
the, the thing that people mostly think about when you mention senior games is sports is, uh, uh, and competition, but it's not all that. That's, that's a big part of it. But uh, North Carolina Senior Games also has an element known as Silver Arts, which uh, encourages seniors to be involved in heritage, literary, visual, and performing arts activities in addition to, uh, to sports. Everybody's not a sports person, so right. this, this has something for everyone. URA Senior Games serves the seniors of Stanley County and Montgomery County, and as I mentioned, AP, Abmar Parks and Recreation is the lead agency, but we partner with Stanley County Senior Services and the Troy Montgomery Senior Center to coordinate all that. And it's, it's a fairly large program, about uh, in, around 200 participants uh, wow. each year over the course of the year. Wow. We do periodic uh, clinics and uh, special tournaments that, uh, that of senior games activities during the year also to kind of keep everybody in the swing of things. In addition to senior games, uh, we have uh, a senior club that uh, is uh, centered for out of the Waddell Center. They call themselves the Silver Foxes. And they meet three mornings a week at the Waddell Center. It's mostly uh, mostly folks from the South Albemarle community right there around the center, but like all of our programs, it's open to anyone. And uh, they come together three mornings a week. They, they, do, some, they do exercise. They get out and walk. Uh, they, they have a number of games and so forth that they play. And it's just a good social time for them uh, as well. So uh, we, we, try to, we try to touch all parts of the population. A lot of times people think of parks and recreation as just for youngsters, but uh, we try to have yeah. something for everybody. Yeah, I was going to say that I think that is a bias. Most people they mm -hmm. think of the kids right. and forget about the, us, uh, those that are growing older. Um, you, I know it's in Albemarle, but I mean, as other folks come in and use the park, I mean, that's sort of an understood kind of thing. I mean, in terms of the city of Albemarle, I mean, you don't have to just be a city resident to use that. I mean, that's correct. I mean, the, uh, the parks are open to all. Uh, there is, if, so, if, if people want to take part in a program, there is a fee difference based on whether a person lives or, or owns property inside the city limits and pays city taxes or not. It's a little higher if they don't. Uh, as it is, our, our budget is, is uh, funded completely by City of Albemarle property taxes. The county does not contribute to our budget. Other towns don't contribute to our budget. So uh, if a person lives in Albemarle or, and or owns property in Albemarle, they're paying city taxes to contribute to what we do. So their fee is not quite as high as someone from, from outside. Gotcha. Well, and that, that's sort of understood. Um, one of the things that I've, and I need to learn a little bit about this myself, is a, uh, uh, the Adopt-a-Park program. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what does that entail? The Adopt-a-Park program if, is, is based on the same premise as Adopt-a-Street or Adopt-a-Highway. Okay. And this is an opportunity for an individual or a, a group of people, a family, a, a civic club, to basically take a park or one of our facilities under their wing and uh, contribute to making it better. This could be through periodic cleanup days. It could be through, uh, through uh, providing uh, either by donation or by building additional equipment there. Uh, it could be uh, through uh, helping make people aware of the facility and making sure it looks good or a combination of any and all of those. Uh, if, if we have a group that, that wants to do that, uh, we'll sit down with them and go over what we expect. We generally want them to have at least a cleanup day a month, uh, mm -hmm. a work day a month in the park. and if, if they have, uh, if they do that for a year without uh, and, uh, and and stick with it, we'll we'll recognize them with a sign in the park. 
So uh, it's, it's uh, like I say, very similar to what you yeah. see on Dr. Highway. Well, and I assume they just contact uh, the office? Contact our Parks and Recreation Office. Uh, Larry Davis is our person on staff that uh, heads that up. Very good. That's a, a neat opportunity. Uh, another program that I had not heard anything about is the Memory Tree program. This this is a uh, a program that was uh, that is a cooperative effort between our department and the Albemarle Tree Commission, and what it provides is an opportunity for a person to memorialize a loved one or honor uh, a loved one or honor someone that they want to honor by planting a tree in one of our parks. And the tree will have a cast aluminum plaque placed at the base of it that uh, identifies who it's placed for and who placed the tree. Uh, the cost to do that is $250. And what we do is, is we'll uh, plant the tree and take care of it for the first year. If something happens, it doesn't take root, uh, uh, storm knocks it down right. or something like that, we'll replace it in the first year. Uh, and the, uh, that cost basically covers the cost of the tree, the cost of the plaque, and the cost of the initial care. We've probably got uh, 15 or 20 uh, memory trees planted in different parks right really? now. Really? Is it which ones are most popular? All parks? Or uh, City much? Lake primarily is where, uh, where uh, most of them are. Yeah. Interesting. Playful City USA signs uh, several years ago started seeing those pop up up and down uh, the highways. That's a kind of a unique uh, distinction that we've received here as well. Correct. We are one of, uh, I believe, eight cities in the state of North Carolina that has achieved Playful City USA status. That is done. Playful City USA is a is a uh, program. Uh, that is sponsored by the nonprofit Kaboom, uh, and that that organization is is formed and it advocates for safe, attractive, and accessible play spaces for children uh, in municipalities, towns, counties across the nation. And uh, in order to achieve Playful City USA status. Uh, a city has to uh, put together a plan to make sure that its playgrounds are accessible, they are safe, uh, that, and that uh, we, we are trying to keep them updated. And we're we're mo making movement in, the, in those ways. They have a grant program where we can tap into to buy new playground equipment with the caveat that, we, that the playgrounds when they are built are built entirely by volunteer help. Uh, hmm. Our staff can be there in a supervisory role, but it can't be completely staff done. It has to really? be, we have to go out and get volunteers. So we hope to be uh, in, the next, uh, in the next year or so be doing our first build up at Montgomery Park to try to replace some of the older equipment. Uh, I said Montgomery, that's not right, right. Moorhead, Moorhead Park, uh, in order to uh, replace some of the aging equipment up there. Uh, and uh, Playful City USA is, uh, 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 also uh, gives an opportunity for, uh, for towns to adopt policies to make all playgrounds accessible to the public, even those on private grounds or on school grounds. That's generally not a problem around here, so most of our focus has been on trying to keep our playgrounds updated and, and uh, keep the equipment and the, the ground surfaces safe and so forth. Well, and, and given the fact that uh, playground equipment in and of itself is expensive, Very. and it's the kind of thing that y'all are going to place as a premium on making sure that it's safe, because, I mean, obviously there's nothing worse than uh, an injury or something that occurs, and if you can prevent that, you want to try to do that. Newer technology, safer surfaces right. are all wonderful things, but uh, they come at a price. They absolutely do, and, and uh, a person that has not priced playground equipment would, would probably get bug-eyed if they saw what yeah, it costs. Yeah, yeah. Um, Accessibility is another thing that y'all have taken very seriously in terms of being around for all people. 
are most of the facilities, I guess, uh, reasonably accessible for handicapped and those yes. things? Yes. Uh, anything, uh, any public facilities that are built or renovated after 1990 have to meet the uh, standards of the Americans with Disabilities mm -hmm. Act. And we, although we haven't, uh, all of our facilities don't fall under that, there's really not many that, uh, that we don't have at least one facility accessible under ADA standards. An example would be swimming pools. Rock Creek was built before anybody right. had even thought about uh, accessibility standards, but Moorhead, since 1990, is completely handicapped accessible. The only thing that we've had to do at Moorhead we've, uh, is to provide a lift in order to get uh, a person who's physically challenged in and out of the pool. And that, that, became, uh, that became law two years ago. Right. We also have one at Rock Creek, and we can, we can make Rock Creek handicapped accessible if folks will call ahead because we have to make arrangements for them to be able to pull their car up to the pool to, to get folks in and out. Our programs, uh, we, we are a small parks and recreation department in the big scheme of things. Many larger cities have, have uh, program divisions that deal in adaptive recreation and, or therapeutic recreation. And, and uh, they have programs specifically for folks with physical challenges. We're not big enough to where we're able to do that. But we do invite and make our programs available to anyone who, and if anyone needs physical assistance or, or a, a reasonable accommodation made to participate in one of our programs, they, all they need to do is call us and meet with the uh, staff member who's over that program, and we'll sit down and work out a plan of action to make that possible. Very good. Um, 2010 Comprehensive Bicycle Plan. Uh, is another area we talk about you know this whole community is a big running community and it's a big cycling community and that's one of the beauties i think of stanley county is that there's a lot of physical activity that goes on but uh bicycling uh tell me a little bit about that relationship that y'all have with that plan the uh the city's comprehensive bicycle plan came uh, on the heels of the city also having done a comprehensive pedestrian plan right before it. Both of those, both of those planning efforts were funded by grant money from the North Carolina Department of Transportation. And the, the uh, uh, bicycle plan and the pedestrian plan too are in place that uh, to provide the city with guidance when, say, streets are resurfaced. Mm -hmm. or new streets are built with them with uh, it provides guidance for those new or, or renovated streets to be pedestrian and bicycle friendly and you, we're already seeing some of that if you go over around East Albemarle School and Albemarle mm -hmm. Middle School there's a lot of brand new sidewalk that has been put in there uh, that was partially funded by the Safe Routes to School program, but it would have never come about had we not had the pedestrian plan right. in place. Likewise, some street resurfacing that will be taking part this year will, and, and in the future will have uh, bi designated bicycle lanes for uh, bicyclists through busy areas. Uh, and, and like greenways, this is something that we'll only be able to do as it becomes available as resurfacing takes place or new streets are built. But uh, it, it, the, those plans provide the guidance to make Albemarle more of a pedestrian friendly and bicycle friendly city. And uh, not just friendly, but safe. Safe, yeah. No, well, I, I think it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity uh, for us to, it's like you said, it's, it's slow, but uh, you gotta have a plan in place to be able to grow sure. into that. Um, well, Toby, I, I know we've taken a long time. I, I didn't realize as much. That you, you mentioned that you're a small parks uh, operation, but based on all that you've talked about, it's a pretty vibrant parks and recreation department. And uh, I've learned a lot myself in just what all goes on. I think I know a little bit about it, but until you started talking, I, I've learned a lot. I think uh, on the surface, uh, 
whether it's Albemarle or, or uh, Charlotte or uh, anywhere, I, th I think people a lot of times don't realize all that comes under the Parks and Recreation mm -hmm. umbrella. And uh, we, we, have our, we have contact with a lot of different things, uh, but uh, all of it we feel like is, is beneficial to the community and uh, we're open to ideas, suggestions, any, anytime anybody wants to talk to us about something they like or that they don't like or that they would like to see us try, mm -hmm. our ears are open, our doors are open. Yeah. Well, I've enjoyed uh, hearing all about it. I appreciate you joining me for this uh, particular episode and I would encourage folks to, uh, to give you a call if they want to find out more about uh, the different programs that, uh, that y'all provide. And I want to thank Parks and Recreation as well for your involvement in our various community health coalition efforts that seek to improve the community's health. I think you all seem to get it that it's a key cog in the wheel that uh, we need to make a, a healthy community. We've all got to work together. It. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Well, that'll do it for today's uh, uh, show. But until we meet again, I wish you all a very healthy day. Thank you.